Well, it's such a beautiful sunny day today. We've come and knocked back some of the weeds in the beer garden. Just leaving our lovely flowers, lobelia, forget-me-nots, peonies, dicentra, whatever they are. It looks lovely, doesn't it, really? And, uh, well, I'm contemplating taking the scaffolding down today because the wall, I mean, look how that's come up. It's fantastic. It looks really good from the bridge. So what I might do, start to disassemble the scaffolding today and then we can get some shots from the other side of the bridge maybe or shall I go and finish the welding hmm questions questions it is a lovely day to be working outside after all and I can always do the welding on a rainy day so I might just do the scaffolding today since I've got Gemma with me Stop me falling in, perhaps. Well, that didn't take long at all. So I have taken the scaffolding down outside. And uh, because it didn't take me too long, I thought I'd crack on with welding these parts that we've got. So a lot of the parts that we've made, they're difficult to cover on either end so I can purge on it, the inside of them. So I'm thinking about using this like uh, serving tin, stainless steel serving tin as a bit of an argon uh, shielding box. So the plan is to instate a little valve to one side of it, maybe like there, so I can plug my purging line in, and then fill it up with like maybe stainless steel bolts or something, and just drop the part in on the top, and I can weld in situ in there um, without having to try and bung up the ends. I think it'll work, so I'm just going to have a little bit of a play with this uh, and then maybe nip up screw fix to pick up a load of bolts to fill it with. I won't fill it all the way to the base. I've got some of this stainless steel mesh that I used of course for the, uh, for the false bottom in the mash tun. So we'll sit a little piece of that in there to suspend it up and then the bolts will act as a diffuser of some type to allow the argon to percolate through and then maybe we'll put some type of lid to cover half of it and uh, see see how it works. I think it will, quite frankly. So, hold there. Yeah. So that's a little four mil pilot hole. And then, I think this is the right size, 12 or 13 mil. far away and then we've got the little fitting I better clean this hole up first actually just like that and then I think that you know what it will thread in it will thread in. So let's get let's get the winder on it. I'll just zoom you in a little bit because I know I'm stood at the other side of the room today. Because all these lids are in the way. Oh yeah. It's cutting its own thread. And this is a BSPT fitting as well, so the further in we wind it the wider the threads go, almost, I would say self-sealing. Oh, I am bloody pleased with that. Well, I never anticipated it to be self-sealing, I thought I was going to have to weld this on. Yeah, I'll buy that for a dollar as they say. So there we go. We've actually got it in and it looks sealed and tight. There it is from the inside. I think we can work with that. So let's get the purge line on the other side and some of the 
perforated steel sat on the bottom and then we'll go and get some nuts anybody nuts right so we're down here hi we're downstairs should i say i've just been up to cut this piece of steel from the stock that we've got up there and uh, i think if i just line one edge up just take this dent out We line one edge up and go around it with a permanent marker like so. I think I'll be able to use the tin snips to just cut out the shape that we need in this. Uh, and this stainless steel sheeting I'll run across these here good set of snips these are I got them off the local flea market I got like four or five pairs of really old antique snips for about ten quid all in honestly they don't make them like this anymore oh look at that oh. They've held up though. Right, so that should effectively just drop in there. Well, it almost does. Just needs a little bit of fine, fine fettling on the edges with maybe the uh, the sander will do it. Let's try that. And there we go. So it just about, well it does, it fits in nicely. But I can't get it back out properly so we're going to have to just pop a little little handle on it. So I've got a little bit of scrap steel here. So I'll just bend that kind of into a little handle shape. And we'll just go ahead and weld that onto there. I don't know if you can see that very well. Well, I'm quite chuffed I started this. Turned into quite a project, so we've got the tin, which you can just about see here, stainless steel. We've got the little, what would you call it, diffuser mesh, which fits nicely in there. So I've put it into position, and then I've drawn a line around it. You can see in there the line, and then I've just cut a few little pieces of stainless steel out of the scrap bin just little pieces like this there we go and all I'm going to do is top middle uh, top, bo top bottom left and right <laughs> I'm going to weld these little bad boys onto the tin exactly on the line so that we can put the diffuser mesh in without losing it in the uh, in the bottom of the tin, if you like. So let's a bit more stick out, I think, because I can't get my torch in there very well. That's probably a consideration as well when we come to welding. Might have to put a stubby. Oh come on, a stubby uh, torch back on so I can see what I'm doing and so I get a little bit of manoeuvrability inside the tin. Right, I think we'll go about there. Just like that. Just like that. So there we go. That, I think, will do it. Oh, perfect. That's going nowhere. So what I want to do then, once that's on, is fill this whole thing up with, uh, with stainless steel nuts. So we've got a big diffuser and we can put our part in there. So let's turn this round now. Get the filler rod. Just see if I can repair this little hole.
There we go, that'll be coked on the inside, but that's not, not a major issue for us here because, of course, this is not a hygienic piece of equipment at all. It's purely functional. So let's have a look at where we are with this. Oh, I'm chuffed. I am chuffed. Let's go and get the stainless steel bolts and do some welding. Right, I'm very keen to see if this works. So having watched Jody on welding tips and tricks, he made one of these, but he used uh, copper BBs to fill the pan up. Of course, we're not going for copper BBs. We're going for stainless bolts. So we've got a good mixture of all different sizes here, ranging from M4s right up to M12s and I'm thinking that that will be enough to act as a diffuser. Quite a lot of bolts to be honest but I suppose the good thing about it is it's uh, conductive so hopefully we should have obviously the uh, the argon percolating up through it, not a problem. And if I ever need any bolts for anything, well, I've got a good selection of them here, haven't I? I think maybe the M4s was a bit of a waste of time. Could do with maybe some more M12s by the looks of things. So we might have to just nip back to screw fix another day. I'm not going today. We get some M12s, these M5s, yeah, again, pissing in the wind with the smaller bolts, but that's that. So that's full of stainless steel bolts and look. So let's see if it works. So quite conveniently, I've got a piece of 10 mil, 8 mil perspex that I wanted to use to make a router table and I shot through on a couple of the holes so I ruined it, I had to do it again. But that will make a good lid so when we've got the argon in there, I've got it flowing at 5 litres per minute. Once it's filled up, all we have to do then is just kind of slide it back a little, drop our part in and commence the weld. I think. Slide it back. Just drop it in. And, uh, well, let's go for it. So I've just run a little bead, just a little tester bead. We'll take it out. Okay, so there seems to be a little bit of coking on the back. I'm thinking maybe the pan is too high up. So uh, I can't see that working unless we drop the pan a touch, which will be difficult now. I've put those bloody tabs in. Right, so I've managed to lower the diffuser mesh considerably, maybe two inches, and you can see now that in there the actual the actual fitting is a lot lower down than it was a minute ago. So hopefully this is going to mean we can uh, have a fully purged part while we commence the welding. So let's let's find a better position for the camera because that's not great. So I can definitely do a better job without uh, this machine, this contraption should I say. 
I can do a neater weld whilst I'm back purging on both sides, but of course the trouble is I have to set up, you get lots and lots of sticky tape on the outside, your tape sets on fire and melts, and usually the inside result isn't much better than what these are anyway. Uh, I think the key is practice, that's a good one, and this is the uh, cam lock to RJT, uh, tri clamp to RJT. So I think practice makes perfect, and the more we do with, look at the colour on that, I've put way too much heat into it, but the more of these that we do in this box, the better we're going to get. And if you look at the colour of that one, for instance, I've toned down my technique. I dropped the amps on one of them, that didn't penetrate properly. So we're back up to 70 amps, concentrating on the seam and whizzing around pretty quickly. And you can see the discoloration on the edge of that ain't all that bad, if I'm honest. I just have to cover my face up to stop the facial recognition so it'll focus. So that ain't too bad. So I'll do a couple more, I've got one here that I need to do, I'm pretty pleased, the box gets warm, that's something I've noticed, um, but yeah, I reckon, I reckon we can work with this, it's good for these small parts, I don't know how useful it's going to be for any of the bigger pieces, we'll have to uh, suck it and see really, uh, but I'm just going to continue to uh, mosey on through these and uh, get them all welded up. It was all going well until I turned around and walked into the chair. Unbelievable. But, let me just turn the gas off. Now that was an excellent run. I've got every single piece of stainless steel that I tacked up yesterday, all welded, ready for pickling. The only thing I need to do is weld the outlets on the tanks, which are five welds that I've got to climb in the tanks to do. Then those new, uh, new tanks are ready, almost. I do have the cooling, and I think there's one or two holes in one of them that need patching up. But what a productive Friday. It's half past four, time for a beer. So before I bugger off home for a tasty beverage in the sunny, sunny, sunny back garden, I did promise you all a little peek of the wall from the other side of the canal. So let's cruise over there now and uh, take a goose and I'll see you on tomorrow's vlog after this. How's that for a shot? Damn it that lovely. Damn it that bloody lovely folks.
Are they? They're all coming back, look. I've no idea. What, Pilgrim Fathers, is it? Yeah. 